Yeah, sort of. So this is a talk you've all been uh, waiting for. It's uh, joint work with uh, Siwan Chan, who is here, and uh, Dimitris Papeliopoulos. So this is the third talk in a row about uh, PCA. Let me just remind you that principal component analysis is this uh, really simple magical algorithm. You take a, you get a matrix of uh, gene expression or not. It's a huge matrix. You can't see it, and it turns it into this really nice graph that's uh, ver uh, easy to view, and you can reason about, etc. And it's important to remind you that this quantity that we want to maximize, x transpose ax, we call it the explained variance. It tells us how much of the matrix is really captured in this uh, two-dimensional picture. So it's very useful. But the x, the optimal x that we find, uh, is this uh, really long vector, uh, something times z z1 plus something times z2 plus minus something times z3, etc. And it's really hard to uh, convince your favorite biologist that this means anything. So instead, we want to do sparse PCA, and now we restrict this vector x to be of uh, sparse decay. So it's uh, it's now much uh, easier to interpret. It's less likely to be overfit. But uh, we have some computational issues. So sparse PCA has been studied in cult and uh, other venues uh, a lot in recent years in this uh, sparse spike covariance model, uh, which roughly means that your uh, A that you're trying to optimize with is the identity matrix plus some rank one k by k block plus noise. And in this model, there has been uh, a lot of uh, work in the recent years. There are really nice uh, trade-offs between uh, computational complexity and sample complexity. So if you have a few samples, you it's uh, computationally intractable. But if you have a lot of samples, you can actually um, find this uh, k by k block. And this um, has been called average case um, problem. And to tell, us, to tell you what we're doing here, to relate our work, let me tell you what average case means, because it's confusing for me at least. Uh, so first of all, it means average case harness. So we assume this uh, harness of uh, planet clique. So I mean, those, wor those works assume this harness of planet clique. And uh, we, we start with like worst case harness assumption. And it's confusing. Worst case here is better. So uh, worst case harness assumptions are safer than uh, plan and click. So plan and click is great, but if you can use worst case assumptions, you should always do that. Second thing the average case means is average over noise. So if you get the in average over the um, samples that you get, it's uh, computationally intractable to find this uh, hidden uh, spike. We're going to do best case analysis, but which I mean that I'm going to give you the uh, exact matrix explicitly, and we'll s see that it's still hard to find the uh, the, the best uh, sparse principal component. Lastly, there is a uh, average over instances, so we you can consider a random uh, k rank one k by k block, and uh, it's it's re it's really nice. Uh, um, it's a really nice specific uh, distribution. But your instances that you actually care about probably don't come from this distribution. And so ideally, we'd like an algorithm that works for any distribution. And our goal here is to, say is to find what are the worst uh, possible things that can come up against your algorithm that you think works for any, um, for any distribution. OK. so. Our question was, can we, can we compute uh, this uh, optimal x? And the answer is uh, obviously no. It's NP-hard. There is a very easy reduction from clique. The reason I'm still here is that we care about approximation. So can we find an x that's almost as good as this optimal x that gets us this nice picture? And by almost like as good, I mean that you approximate the explained variance. So your explained variance is almost as high. So first, uh, we show that even if you get this uh, matrix explicit and exactly, finding uh, 1 minus epsilon for some constant epsilon 
running a one minus epsilon approximation is NP hard. But we give a very simple uh, n to the minus one third approximation algorithm. So there is still a huge gap. And we'd like to, to know, I mean, if, if, we can, if we can actually get this uh, 0.99 approximation, that would be great. If n to the one third is the best we can do, it's not so great. Um, it seems like the, the rest of the results suggest it's harder than this uh, 0.99 approximation. So we get uh, for any constant, um, for any constant c, approximation to within c is hard assuming the smallest expansion conjecture. And the SDP that uh, we all use to solve um, to solve sparse PC on sufficiently small instances has this uh, quasi quasi polynomial uh, integrality gap. And uh, so let me just tell you, it's uh, bigger than log. The, f the gap is bigger than logarithmic and smaller than polynomial. Um, and to show you how simple all these things are, let me show you the algorithm. So the n to the one third algorithm, it's really just the best of uh, two algorithms. Algorithm one is just look at the standard basis, pick your favorite vector in the standard basis. And if you're a faster linear algebra than I am, then you can see that this gives you an opt over a square root of k approximation. Algorithm two is simply looking at the eigenbasis. And you just take uh, the uh, largest uh, eigenvector, the eigenvector with the largest eigenvalue. And this gives you a k over n approximation. And now if you take the worst case uh, k, that's uh, n to the 2 thirds. And this is uh, n to the minus 1 third approximation algorithm. That's it. And the quasi quasi poly algorithm is just as simple if you're worried. Um, so some, let me come with some open problems. It would be really nice to get NP harness for, uh, even for a tiny uh, factor, for some very problems that look really similar and we don't know NP any NP harness for. Uh, so, for example, there's uh, densest k subgraph, and you're you're looking you're looking for the um, the densest subgraph with k vertices, and if you want to distinguish between a clique and something that's uh, uh, sparser, then that's uh, there is a quasi polynomial time algorithm, but if you want to distinguish between something that's sparse and something that's very very sparse, uh, that should be NP hard, but we don't have um, we don't know how to do to prove that, and there is uh, also this uh, tensor norm problem that we don't know. NP harness of approximation. I think it would be really interesting to get a uh, fixed parameter tractability um, of approximate sparse PCA. Because typically the k that we care about is really small, so if we can get something that depends even exponentially on k but has a nice dependency on n, that would be nice. And I, I don't really understand the approximability in this uh, well-studied uh, sparse spike covariance model. So in this case, where you don't have enough samples to exactly recover the spike, how well, how large of an explained variance can you still get? And lastly, I think uh, it would be really nice to get algorithms that work with some uh, assumptions on the um, on the data. And as an example, there has uh, been really nice works with uh, decay and eigenvalues. Um, that'll be great. Thanks. <laughs>